Hi, thanks for coming back to Guitar Discoveries. It's time for Funky Favorites and Studio Stories, part two. Happy to have my old friend, an amazing musician and studio owner in Los Angeles, Andrew Bush. So Andrew has had a recording studio in Los Angeles in Echo Park for over 26 years, and it recently moved to a new location, an even more beautiful facility than he had before. But this is a, one of those studios in LA that survived the downturn in 08, where a whole lot of studios were cleared out. Andrew's remained standing and strong. He's recorded a whole bunch of big names that you know, and he knows more sidemen and great musicians than anyone I've ever met. Uh, if you haven't seen part one of this story, please go back and check it out. We cover some really interesting things and a very cool dobro, uh, so I hope you'll check that out. But in the meantime, let's dive into part two of Funky Favorites and Studio Stories. This is an Irish uh, bazooki. Four courses, um, kind of like a oversized mandolin, um, and this is another amazing find from my friend Josh. <laughs> so how's this tuned? <laughs> They're usually tuned like the bottom part of uh, of Dad Gad, but maybe a little higher. But right now, I just realized it's funny. I got it tuned like the bottom four strings in a guitar. <laughs> So, except it's a higher string. So this, normally that shape on a guitar is a G chord, but on this guy it's a D chord. So it's got this great, you can take this in so many directions if you want to go, uh, you know, Arabic with it. a slightly you know Middle Eastern quality to it I guess um, you can play it that way or you can kind of have it be a little more halfway between a guitar and a mandolin Thing. It's a lovely it's cool sound. sound. Yep. So, one of my favorite things to do with this on a track is if we've got a guitar arrangement and there's a uh, electric line. I love to record a double of the electric line on this guy. So, uh, you know, whatever the line is, it's just. the line out in a really cool way and you tuck it back in the mix behind the electric and you're like wow that's a cool electric sound yeah when it's actually got this guy behind it so that that's my favorite thing to do with this but i've also got a couple of clients who love this thing we've done a couple tracks where this is the accompaniment uh and it works about it honestly because Josh shows up with these things and if they sound good right I love it you know <laughs> so when you say do they sound good do you actually do any kind of mic test with it or do you just say you play it and feel it and it's know? A, it's more of a vibe for me because uh, 
it, it again it's about the flavorings and one of the things that's happened in the last 10 15 years you know with the advent of you know the internet and digital music distribution and it's a deluge of music online right and so it's a very tricky uh, ocean to navigate for any musician any songwriter any artist but one of the things you can do to help yourself out is to make unusual choices in your arrangements in your instrumentation so when I decide to jump in and buy an instrument it's for something that it does that's slightly unusual it doesn't have to sound perfect or hi-fi or anything like that I mean although I do have a couple of guitars like that that are just beautiful and shimmery and gorgeous but mm -hmm. most of the time I'm looking for something that sounds a little uh, left to center so with this guy you know, I played it and I was like, okay, that's a great sound. And there's all kinds of ways I could use this on a record. So that's really the main mm -hmm. attraction. But there's also, for me as a guitar player, I just love having a lot of different instruments to play on. You know, having known you as long as I have, when I would mm. come to your house, there would always yeah. be cases sitting around. Oh, that's right. And I loved yeah. to go shopping with your yeah, cases, right? Totally. It would be like, what's in this case? Uh -huh. And it would be so fun. And you, most of the time you knew what was in every case. Sometimes yep. you weren't even Sometimes sure what was in yeah, every case, yeah. which I really loved. But then, you know, we would pull things out and... One thing I noticed was, oh, one guitar might be in Dad Gad, and another yeah, one might be right. like the way this is tuned. Yep. That would be very unusual right. on any mandolin style instrument Correct. to have it tuned Correct. to the four bottom four strings of the guitar. Exactly. Especially when you got you know double strings like this. Exactly. Like I would say, well, that's insane. But then yeah. you start playing it, and how does that affect your playing? You know, when you're when you're dealing with sort of an odd yeah. tuning relative to the instrument. It's fun to put the guitar or whatever instrument you're in in a tuning that you're not that familiar with because you discover little patterns, little chord shapes that make something interesting that is a sound that's not available to you in a standard tuning and often you find it by accident and then you find little melodies, little patterns that you can play and it creates something new. So it's, it's a lot of fun and in addition I'm a huge Michael Hedges fan who's one of the brilliant masters of alternate tunings that was real inspiring to me you know yeah. to have that and that was another record that i had in high school that was another influential record but that we're air, talking aerial boundaries of course I the classic <laughs> as a 14 year old kid i was like what the hell is he doing <laughs> you know I, I heard an interview with david crosby who apparently met michael hedges because he was like Hedges was sitting playing guitar by a van in a parking lot somewhere oh, near SF, amazing. right near Sausalito or something. Yeah. I think if the story is accurate, Crosby yeah. comes out of a grocery store and yeah. hears what he thinks are two guys playing an amazing Ooh, duet together. Right. And he hears it and he's like, where is that coming from? He wow. realizes it's live, but more amazing, he realizes it's one, one guy. guy. Right. And he introduces himself to Hedges and they become fast oh, friends no and kidding. influence each other with oh, tunings that's and all fantastic. the rest. So I think that's an accurate story. I mean, maybe that's, don't quote me on it or look for David Crosby. That's a beautiful Crosby. story, yeah. totally. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because, you know, Crosby See, loves his open tunings. And, and Crosby, for me, Crosby was a huge influence because. Um, I love Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Of course, yep. I love the birds. I knew yep. he was coming out of there. Crosby released If I Could Only Remember My Name. Oh, yeah. And I remember That's going great. into a record store. I had this great local record store, and, and he'd have his top records, but they didn't correspond to what was actually the top popular records. Right. They were his top his records. His favorite records. My 20 right. favorites, you know? And so oh, I walked in brilliant. one day, and brilliant. I remember I have, I have two older brothers, and they had said to me, hey, go get... Tumbleweed Connection by Elton John. That's the next album you should get. Nice. I get to the store. There's Tumbleweed Connection right up there. It's somewhere in the top five. And I see the, if I could only remember my name. Oh, and the right. record store owner had had it flipped around. So it was the Crosby's face kind of with this red light on it, right? Right. I oh. heard Traction in the Rain playing. And I literally just said, 
I don't care what my brothers want me to buy. I'm buying this record. This is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. And then I found that he had songs like Orléans, which is just like layered harmonies. You right, know? And, right. And, and for me, it was this miracle of that's what I want to do. Uh, wow. Right there. I want to play those kind of guitar sounds, all of which were open tuning. Of course. Yeah. You, you put a guitar in an alternate tuning, and then it just forces your brain to say, oh, I can't do the usual anymore. Exactly. I have to wake up again. Exactly. And, and then the... The, the happy accidents kind of like yep exponentially multiply right exactly yeah. yep that's a big deal no it's a big deal and and you know this guy so this guy floats around you know I it, it's it's in guitar mode now but most of the time when I play this it's uh, to this right now so now it's like the bottom half of dadgad so now So yeah, right. You know, it's like a, immediately I'm, I'm in a different place. It's a total other thing. really cool. That's a yeah. beautiful instrument, actually. I love this guy. Love and you know what? I, I really have this do. funny feeling that it would probably sound amazing oh, with this. I bet it would. I bet it would. So you're in Nashville, right? I am in Nashville, and I don't have any idea if I'm even close to it. You want me to go up to you? How about that? Yeah. You got fewer strings. Yeah. Only by two. Exactly. I love this guy. It's another great sound. You let me steal this from you for about a year. <laughs> Did it ever make it on time? Oh, records? yeah, made oh, it good, on good, a couple good. of records, definitely. Uh, that's great. I'll let you set the tone. So you set it and I'll just follow you. <laughs> no, you, other way. You, you set it. I want to do melody for a second.
That is really a cool tone. Beautiful, right? <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, I don't know where we just were, but it wasn't the United States of yeah, America yeah, no, in no, 2019. It was, it was uh, you know, <laughs> Appalachia adjacent, maybe. Beautiful <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Part two of Funky Favorites and Studio Stories. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think about the instrument that we shared, uh, about the little jam we did, whatever you want to talk about in the comments. Appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe and come back next time. We're going to be doing some cool stuff with cool axes, important accessories, uh, interesting tips. Uh, go to guitardiscoveries.com. You can see all the videos there. Please tell your friends if you know other guitarists. It really means a lot to me. Uh, I don't do this for the money. I do it for the fun and to pass along the information and the knowledge. So I really appreciate you being here. See you next time.